Good day, everyone. My name is Marie Segito, and I'm a senior reference librarian at the New York State Library. First, I would like to thank Pillars Executive Committee for letting me present a pre-recorded session on the challenge of citation and why documentation is a significant part of understanding the academic research process. A little bit of background on myself. I was a former Spanish teacher for pre-K through 12. I started working in libraries in high school and college. I decided to obtain my master's in library and information sciences when I left my career as a teacher and started working at the Patricia Standish Curriculum Library at the College of St. Rose in Albany, New York. At the Curriculum Library, I helped faculty, pre-service teachers, speech language pathologists, and school counselors obtain resources needed to develop lesson planning, activities, and therapy sessions for students and clients for ages birth through adults. I then moved on to becoming the Director of Library Services at Maria College, where I worked with faculty and students in health-related professions, especially nursing and occupational therapy. Education and health are similar in the fact that they are dealing with scholarship, service, and caring for others. Currently at the New York State Library, one of my responsibilities is finding primary sources for educators and creating educator guides with activities to utilize in the classroom and library, whether on site or remote. Today, we're going to learn why citation can be tricky and how to make it less challenging for students. Here are the session objectives. Discussion will include why faculty stress the usefulness of citation why it is helpful to use subject-specific style guides in the secondary classroom, how to implement use of journal articles and databases within your projects, and accessibility in the citation reference list. From working with many faculty members at colleges and institutions throughout the years, here are the main items I learned. Faculty encourage students to become experts in their fields chosen. This is why faculty members stress citation. Faculty encourage students to continue professional development once they graduate. Usually when you are in the health or educational fields, you will have to continually read journal articles and attend professional conferences for continuing education credits and to maintain licensure. Faculty stress the importance of the changes and modifications made in the fields continually. Faculty are sticklers with citation and plagiarism. Faculty members will take credit off if an item is not cited correctly. For example, if there's no period or comma, something is indented incorrectly, italics were not used properly, etc. Anything like that, the faculty members will take off credit. Faculty stress to students with students in regards to plagiarism that they will either fail the project or fail the class if they plagiarize. Faculty and I, when I was embedded in the classroom sometimes, we would stress to students to use the citation manager and generators as a guide. They are not perfect. Recommendations would be to cite continually while students are writing for research papers and projects. Many databases have incorporated citation managers and generators when accessing the journal article needed. Faculty and I, would recommend always to use it, but just to copy and paste it at the end of the document for the reference list, and then to always double check at the end for the citation and the style format that was used. When working on projects in the classroom, try to incorporate high school students' interests or possibly what they may like to study in the future. This will start acclimating students to the databases and journal articles needed and the citation format needed for those particular fields when using specific style guides. For example, if it is in regard to the health sciences, such as nursing, occupational therapy, speech language pathology, psychology, counseling, or education, students would need to use the American Psychological Association APA format. If they are interested in history, students would use the Chicago format. If they are interested in the languages or the literatures or the arts, it would be the Modern Languages Association MLA format. Here's an example from a LibGuides page I found from the Library at American University, listing 
which style the style guides formats to try based upon the subject discipline. Please use these citation formats lists as a guide. Sometimes it depends on the academic institution or the faculty member of which style format needs to be utilized in the class. Other good places to look at for the citation are college and library LibGuides and subject guides pages. Many provide examples of the format and examples of the citation of the style formats online. Another good place to look at style formats is at the OWLs from Purdue University's online writing lab. Databases and journal articles. Databases are the sources for searching. When researching, faculty would like students to use journal articles from databases and not just finding articles on Google. If students need to use Google, Google Scholar is recommended. Here is an example from the database of Gale Academic One file. There are four main items needed when accessing journal articles from databases for your research. Peer reviewed journal articles are articles where experts in the related field review and evaluate the article prior to publishing. Many databases have a search field feature where you are able to view just peer reviewed articles. For the Gale databases, you need to click on the check mark to limit to peer reviewed. Faculty requires sometimes, especially in the health, education, and medical field, that the journal articles are not more than five years old. If it is over five years, they will not count it unless it is for historical purposes. Here in the Gale example, I have clicked on the custom date range to limit to five years. When you click on the journal article, the next page will allow you to obtain the PDF. The PDF is located in the right hand corner with the download button, which is circled in red. When citing information, you need the direct page of the source of the document. It is best to use a scan of the PDF and not the HTML Word document of the journal article. The HTML Word document is not the direct page in the journal article. You want the actual page from the original source document for citation purposes. Reference lists at the end of the journal article are a good place to find other sources of research for your student, especially when needing more sources to review for projects or looking at dates of the article for more recent years in the past five years. The DOI. The DOI is a direct digital object identifier. This is used as a persistent permanent identifier to a journal article and will be needed when citing the resource. It allows you to click on the link and be directed to the source. In the next slide, we will see the persistent link directed from the original source of the Springer Open Access. Gale was the search tool to find the article and Springer is the publisher. Here is an example of the EBSCOhost database. It is to find eBooks. Notice you can limit your search by years, full text and download is available and PDF is always recommended. Always when you cite a source, use the PDF if you, it is available. Now we, be, we will be discussing some ideas on how to start citing resources with some activities to utilize with your students. The use of picture books is a delightful and resourceful way to take bits of information and citing historical documentation based upon the text. Journal articles are another good source for students to start reading and using in projects in the high school. Establishing connections with local colleges and universities will generate enthusiasm for projects when students visit campuses and utilize the library resources. Use of picture books with lots of historical content and illustration is a helpful and useful way for learning how to cite materials. A great author and illustrator is Peter Cease. His works are intriguing for high school students. They include much historical documentation with the use of illustrations in an advanced format. The illustrations highlight the text, 
can be explored for research, and can be dissected for citation purposes. His work, such as Starry Messenger, Tibet Through the Red Box, The Tree of Life, and The Wall, Growing Up Behind the Iron Curtain, will be enthusiastic. The students will be, have great time with it and they'll learn so much. The Wall is one of my favorite books by Peter Sees. Here is a synopsis from the back cover of the book. He was born in the middle of Europe in the middle of the 20th century at the start of the Cold War. In his graphic memoir, Peter Sees tells what life was like for a boy who loved to draw and make music, who joined the young pioneers, stood guard at the giant statue of Stalin, passed Louis Armstrong in a snowstorm, longed for blue jeans and beetle style boots, let his hair grow long, secretly read band books, listened to jammed radio, and traveled with the Beach Boys when they toured Czechoslovakia. Peter Cease's story of growing up under a totalitarian regime proves that creativ creativity can be discouraged, but not easily killed, and that the desire to be free came naturally to a generation of young people behind the Iron Curtain. This book is a tour de force. Within the book, Peter Cease collected his journal entry writings and illustrations with dates incorporated on the happenings during his youth. There are little bits of information where you could ask students in pairs to find information on the writing. Students could use journal articles, newspaper articles, or history books to find the information related to the specific piece from the journal entry. From there, students can use the material to cite according to the style format. This way you are connecting a profound way to illustrate how to find research based upon historical text from a graphic memoir inciting and learning in a fun and creative way. Here's an example from the wall, growing up behind the iron curtain. One of Peter Cease's journal entries is June 17th, 1962. The Czechoslovak national soccer team plays Brazil in World Cup soccer championship final in Chile. We lose. I explored the ProQuest historical newspaper database, the New York Times, to find newspaper articles on the World Cup championship event from June of 1962. From there, I cited it in three different ways, using three different style formats, APA, MLA, and Chicago. Please note the URL in the citations. This is not a persistent link, a permanent link, or a DOI. It is a URL from the database and the faculty member or student would need access from the library in order to access it. Journal articles and meaning. One way for good preparation for college level study is to have secondary students start reading journal articles, possibly five to 10 pages long. For secondary students, you want to select articles to be of interest, such as pop culture, music, video games, anime, or in relation to study of a historical event with a piece of literature from class, or reading related to something that is going on currently in the world. Create an exercise where the students can dissect the articles. You do not want the students to tune out. Journal articles can be challenging enough especially related to the health sciences when the terminology can be so difficult. Have students circle the words they do not understand and have the students try to use context clues to determine the meaning. Have students work in pairs once they read the article. Have students work to, together to find out the definitions they do not know. This will generate discussion and students will learn to document terminology visiting college libraries. Set up a time with local college and universities where your students can possibly interact with faculty librarians and faculty and the library to research a topic. Coordinate with the high school librarian, the faculty librarians at the college or university and provide project prior to on-site visit. Have students review the college and library's website before visiting to get them used to the items available. 
possibly set up an online introduction to the library with the faculty and the faculty librarians prior to the visit as well. Have students explore the library's website by looking at the LibGuides and Subject Guides pages and use the online catalog to find print and electronic resources. It is good to demonstrate to use multiple resources, print and electronic. Teach students that resources are not all digital and include the print as one of the references for the project. If students are in AP or college level courses in the high school, this would be a great opportunity to introduce library learning for your students and get them acclimated to resources at the library on campus. The students should be allowed access to electronic resources off-site if they are registered for a course at the college or the university with a college and high school course program. Students may wish to visit other college library web pages of where they would like to go to school in the future. All these suggestions will allow students to become familiar with how the library works at the college level. Citation reference list and accessibility. Recently, I discussed with faculty librarians and faculty member colleagues about citation and the reference list and accessibility. One colleague said it best, there is no good answer to this question right now. What I learned is it is difficult and a challenge. Here are some of the recommendations from research and discussion I had with colleagues. Each style format has different criteria for accessibility. Look at the website for the style guide and its relation to accessibility. To use text that makes sense for a screen reader to be read alone. Use user-friendly fonts and hyperlink colors for accessibility. Add hyperlinks or URLs, permalinks, DOI, or PDF to the article to the title in the reference list to make it accessible as descriptive text of the address. Recommendations from Web Content Accessibility Guidelines are provided. From the Journal of Teaching Disability Studies at CUNY, it presents guidelines for authors which are extremely helpful for the use of citation reference list. I found this to be the most helpful. Right now I'm going to read a little bit of regarding um, reference list from the Journal of Teaching Disability Studies. To make a reference list more accessible, Suggestions provided by librarians with expert accessibility expertise include hyperlink the title of the source and the reference list as well as providing the URL. This allows you to create the title as meaningful link text for users with disabilities who need this, as well as provide the URL for good reason. Use the list feature in Word to make each item in the bibliography a list item. Choose the option not to display bullets for the list. Not using the list feature for list disadvantages some assistive technology users. Creation of some style features with some current assistive technology can be excessively difficult. Articles will be published online and copy editors will format bibliographies in order to meet best practices for accessibility, not necessarily citation style guidelines. I found that text at the end to be the most helpful. As for references, do your best. If you cannot find an answer on how to cite something, just try your best. This happened to me when implementing this presentation. I was trying to find out how just to cite a database itself in APA format, seventh edition. I couldn't find the answer. And, and it said that you do not in the citation format for APA, you don't cite it, a database itself. You have to cite the journal article from the database. So I decided to place the name of the database and the date. I utilized the date of the database for research. As I stated before, just try your best. If you have questions, please email me. And thank you so much for me presenting today. My email below is 
M A R I S A dot G I T T O at N Y S E D dot G O V. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.